Ulysses and the Cyclops Ulysses and his companions reached an island which, although they did not know it, was the land of Cyclops. The Cyclops were giant shepherds with only one eye each set in the middle of their forehead. They lived in caves among the hills and kept great flocks of sheep. They did not till the land, but the uncultivated earth produced for them rich wheat and grapes. They did not know how to make wine or bread. They lived, each man to himself, without laws or government. Ulysses, with a chosen party of twelve followers, went to explore what sort of men lived there. They came to a big cave close to the sea. Nobody was there, but from the size of everything inside the cave, they could get an idea of the vast proportions of its owner. They found baskets of cheese, bowls of milk, and young lambs playing in a stone enclosure. The men wanted to take as much cheese as they could carry and return to their ships. But Ulysses was anxious to see the owner of the cave. So they stayed there, eating cheese and drinking wine, which they had brought with them. In the evening, their ears were deafened with a noise like the falling of a house. It was the owner of the cave, who had been out all day feeding his flock, as his custom was, in the mountains, and now drove them home in the evening from pasture. The Grecians hid themselves in the remote parts of the cave at the sight of the giant. He threw down the trunk of a tree which he was carrying for firewood. Next, he drove his flock of sheep into the cave and then picked up a great flat stone and placed it in the entrance to serve as a door. Twenty horses could not have dragged away the stone. Then the cyclop lighted a fire and sat down to milk his sheep and goats. Suddenly, by the glimmering light, the giant saw some of Ulysses' men and asked them who they were. Only Ulysses summoned courage to answer that they were neither robbers nor traders. They were Greeks running from Troy and had lost their way on the seas. He asked the giant to be kind to them in the name of their chief god, Zeus. He replied nothing. But gripping two of the men as if they had been no more than children, he dashed their brains out against the earth and tore into pieces their limbs and devoured them. Then, after drinking many bowls of milk, he lay down and fell asleep among his goats. Ulysses drew his sword and wanted to thrust it with all his might into the bosom of the sleeping monster. But he remembered that they would never be able to move the big stone placed in the entrance. So even if they succeeded in killing the giant, they would be prisoners in the cave and would starve to death. In the morning, the giant ate two more men for breakfast, milked his goats as he was accustomed, and led out his flock. Then he set the great stone in the entrance again. Ulysses, however, did not give up hope, because he had made a plan. The giant had left the tree trunk in the cave, and from this Ulysses cut a piece six feet long and sharpened the end to a point. He instructed four of the men to twist the point in the giant's eye when he fell asleep that night. When the evening came, the cyclop drove home his sheep. Then he closed his stone door and ate two more men. Meanwhile, Ulysses filled one of the wooden bowls full of Greek wine. He offered this bowl to the giant who had never tasted wine. The cyclop drank one bowl after another, and soon he became very cheerful. He asked the name of the benefactor, saying that he would give Ulysses a present. My name is Nobody. My friends and relatives in my own country call me Nobody, Ulysses said cunningly. Then, said the cyclop, This is the kindness I will show you. I shall eat you last of all your friends. He had scarcely expressed his savage kindness when the strong wine overcame him, and he reeled down upon the floor and sank into a deep sleep. Ulysses at once took his long stick of wood and held the point in the fire until it was red hot. Then his four men 
pushed it into the giant's one eye. The cyclop roared and leapt to his feet. He plucked the burning stick from his eye and hurled it madly about the cave. Then he cried out with a mighty voice for the other giants who lived in the neighboring caves. Who is hurting you? They called. The giant answered, Nobody is killing me. If nobody is killing you, why do you wake us out of our sleep? shouted the other giants. Thinking that some disease troubled him, they all went back to bed. Ulysses laughed to see how his trickery had deceived them. The next morning, the giant removed the stone and sat in the threshold, feeling if he could lay hold on any man going out with the sheep. But Ulysses had fastened sets of three sheep together and had tied a man to each of the middle sheep, so that the blind giant's hand would feel only the outside ones. As the sheep went out through the doorway, the giant felt their fleecy backs, never dreaming that they carried his enemies. When they were safely out of the cave, Ulysses unfastened the men. They went to their ships and sailed quickly to the sea. When they were at a safe distance away from the shore, Ulysses shouted to the cyclop, If anyone asks you who blinded you, say that it was Ulysses of Ithaca.